Hello and welcome to the Superintendent's Perspective. I am Mario Salima, Superintendent. I am joined by our Board President, Miguel Mike Parias, and COVID-19 Director, Dr. Anthony Garza. Today, we're going to talk about our graduation ceremonies coming up. Uh, before we go to the graduation, uh, Mr. Garza, I know you've been very busy with the COVID, with the COVID, uh, uh, addressing COVID. Uh, what the latest, what can give us an update on, on, on COVID-19 in our district, in our community? Yes, sir. Uh, well, good afternoon, uh, Mr. Farias, Dr. Salinas. Uh, thank you for having me on your show again. Uh, this is my third time, so I'm, I feel honored. Very good. Um, a little bit on the COVID scene, on the COVID vaccine scene, is that uh, we just completed 36 vaccine clinics, ECISD-led clinics, and we've administered over 28,000 doses. Um, initially, we were only doing Moderna vaccine, but this past week, we started up with the Pfizer. After Pfizer was approved for the 12 year olds and up, it opened up doors for us to go to our middle school students. And so this past week, uh, we've had three 12 year old and up Pfizer clinics and, and we've seen a pretty good turnout. The, the, the kids are coming out for that younger group. They, they need to bring their parents, uh, but it's going well. We, we had over 400 last week at the activity center. We had about 200 at Harwell and about 150 at Bill Garza. And so we're, we're continuing to vaccinate. Um, if we don't make it out to a certain school or not, they can always call our health uh, services at 316 SAFE and uh, schedule their, their vaccination. We, we have clinics every week. If we don't have a clinic, we can give it to them at our health services department. Okay. And I know that the trends uh, last week, Last week, I believe we had one student, no staff. Uh, what, what are the trends for this week? Well, we have great news so far. Uh, this week, we've had zero positive cases. We, we have no COVID positive cases from any student or staff that's on campus. That, that is the best news that we've had. Yes. Over and, the year. and then um, I also noticed that uh, this week, we went under the 7% when it comes to hospitalization. Um, it's a, a, a 6.5 and going up and down, but we haven't hit under 7% in, in about a year. In about a year. It's been about a year since we were under 7% last uh, April. Since yep. We were below 7%. So, so we know the vaccines are working because uh, that, that just translates to that percentage of hospitalization, and it's really gone down dramatically. Um, there were times when it was in the 30s or 40s percent. And, uh, you know, and and the mark that we were supposed to hit was under seven and we're under seven, which is really great news. And it's a testament to um, to the school district, the county, the city, the community working together Correct. to uh, to go ahead and initiate all these vaccines. And, and that's evident. And uh, like I say, uh, the light is getting brighter and brighter because we're getting to the end of the tunnel. And uh, we just see good things coming up before yes, us. Yes, we've, we're beginning to do things that, that we haven't done for for over a year. We had to sit down lunch with the nurses, the mm -hmm. first one in over a year. We we've uh, uh, we have celebrated our students at the board meeting. We haven't mm -hmm. done that in over a year. Uh, we're meeting with our principals and, and directors in person. Mm -hmm. And we, we're doing... Uh, Things that we haven't done in over a year, and a lot of it has to do with the mass vaccination. Yes, sir. That the district, the city, the county in this area, have, we've done. Uh, we've gone out there to the community and vaccinated. And, yes, sir. And it's it driven driven the spread of the disease down. Now the the few cases that we that we do get among the staff are, are those staff that that had opted out of the vaccines. The mm -hmm. vaccines work. Yes, sir. And the vaccines work for the small ones, according to the science. The vaccines work as effectively with 12 year olds, 13, 14, 15, or maybe even better than adults. So yep. vaccines work. I highly encourage parents of eligible children to take the children to get vaccinated. They work. Yeah, you know, the other good thing about it is, I'm sure last year uh, during the height of the, epidemic, of the epidemic, that um, nobody really went out and took vacations. Uh, now you got this opportunity to come to our district get your 12 year old and up vaccinated so you can go out and vacation safely. I mean, that's a good thing to do and it's important and the availability is there. So take this opportunity to come out 
and not only vaccinate your children, but also if you haven't been vaccinated, come out and get vaccinated because even though we're doing a 12 and up, if they happen to come with parents, we do have um, Moderna there for the adults. So we can facilitate not only the children, but also the parents. We're taking them all. Yes, I mean, everybody. Our, so our it target, isn't just 12 years old to 15, right. it's 12 to 100. Our new target is 12 to 15, but we say bring grandma and grandpa, yeah. bring your mom, whoever needs it, yes. bring them over. And they're coming in, they're coming in in droves. Excellent. So we, we are, we're happy to be providing this service. Uh, I did want to give a shout out to the COVID department and the COVID vaccine team out there, our nurses, our police officers, and our paraprofessional staff. Uh, we wouldn't be able to do this without oh, yeah. uh, at 36 clinics and counting. Uh, we're pros at what we do. You know, when, <laughs> when I think back to our first few clinics, they're like, man, we need to walk them out this way, line up over here, put them over here. And today, you know, we can go anywhere and set up in an hour and we're, we're giving shots. Well, so. you know, it's second nature now. It's like yeah. you've, um, seriously, the, the COVID team um, has done phenomenal um, to the point that other school districts have come, other municipalities have come to, uh, to mimic what we do and how we do it. So that's a testament to um, working together and the success that uh, us working together, we're able to accomplish. And, um, and the numbers look good and I'm really happy and I'm looking forward to what the future holds for us. Yes, and, and before we move on to graduation, I do wanna do uh, what, uh, what Mr. Gar Dr. Garcia is saying. Shout out to our nurse staff. Uh, yes. They've taken up the challenge and, and they've taken it through COVID. Yes. 19 in our community. Shout out to the nurses for the heck yes, of sir. that they've done. Last year, sir, we were hit with COVID. We went into quarantine first week of March. Mm -hmm. We all remember that. Uh, it it look, didn't look good for our seniors as far as holding graduation. Graduation for seniors is big. Yes, sir. It's a major milestone for, mm -hmm. for their lives. Yes, For every, everyone. That, that's a milestone to the next chapter. Mm -hmm. And they were going to miss out on that. Uh, graduating uh, in person is is one thing. Graduating virtually is something else yes. altogether. It didn't look good, but toward the end of the school year last year, we, we the disease was was slowing down, and we were able to hold uh, in person graduations at the football stadium. Mm -hmm. We were used to graduating at at the McAllen Convention Center. Then we moved over to the Ogden Arena here in Edinburgh, mm -hmm. and so. When we told our community, our, our, our parents, our students, that we are going to have graduations at the stadium, uh, they were happy. They were happy for that. But uh, I personally, I thought that you know, uh, it's not going to be uh, maybe maybe to the degree of the uh, rev the the degree of quality, maybe a step down uh, from the arena to the stadium. As it turned out, and we all remember that. Uh, it was. I was pleasantly surprised at yes. the, at the um, how well uh, it went for us. The pageantry uh, of the night. Uh, you you were sitting there at, at where you were sitting at mm -hmm. the front of, of the at the front of the graduation ceremonies. You could see the entire length of the field, a sea of red. When yes, Edinburgh High School. Yes, sir. It looked beautiful with the stadium lights. Mm -hmm. The how happy the children were. The parents. Um, I mean, it was like almost a, uh, an experience, uh, like an out-of-body experience, just mm -hmm. when we weren't going to have anything to seeing our students uh, graduate in their beautiful regalia, uh, the, uh, the ambience, the pageantry, it was, it was the highlight of the year, I think. Yes, sir, it was. Uh, it was uh, just taken aback. And, and you know, how beautiful it, it was. And it brought back memories uh, to some of uh, the parents of the children mm -hmm. that were graduating because that's where they graduated. That's correct. And so um, it was very uh, emotional. It was. And um, you know, it's like going back to your roots. And um, and and you're right. At first, it was like, oh, you know, is it going to be mm -hmm. as prestigious? Is it going to be as glamorous? Mm -hmm. Boy, it turned out being even better yeah, because yeah. of the memories that it brought back to their parents. And they're like, ah, oh, Miko, I graduated where you graduated. And, um, and it was a wonderful event. And I appreciate the community out there embracing that and, and making the best out of it. I, I, really I, heard, a, I heard a lot of positive mm -hmm. of the graduation we held at the stadium. 
And you're right, I graduated on that field. And we found an old picture from the field and it looked nothing like what we put together last year. <laughs> I guess the technology, that audio visual production team that we had with a huge uh, digital screen and, and, and the speakers, I mean. Well, I don't think they even had cell phones when you graduated. <laughs> no, no, they don't. I don't want to say what year it was, but no, they didn't. Uh, but I heard a lot of positives yeah. last year. They said, I can't believe what you guys put together at the stadium. Yeah. I graduated here. I don't remember it looking like this when <laughs> I graduated. Like it. And I know that at the no, end of please. the first one, I remember very distinctly Edinburgh High School, the first one. Mm -hmm. the first, and, and at the end of the ceremonies, I walked out to some parents and they said, I cannot believe what I saw. It was yeah. such a beautiful thing. That's awesome. And so, well, we're going to do it again. Yes, sir, we are. The outdoor ceremonies, uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. Garza, can you tell us about that? You're coordinating this? Yes, so we, we've had uh, all of our graduation meetings with all four high schools and their teams, and mm -hmm. we are prepared. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to go over a couple of things, and then we'll throw some ideas around. Mm -hmm. But June 3rd is going to be our first one. That's a Thursday, Economies High School. June 4th will be Edinburgh High School. June 5th, Saturday, will be Vela High School. And June the 6th will be Edinburgh North High School. All our four graduations will be held at Rachel Florida Stadium at 8 p.m. The doors open at 6.30. Okay. And we do require everyone to stay in their car until that time. And at 6.30, they can come out, get in line. And uh, seating for the parents will be first come, first serve. Uh, we are providing each student with four tickets for their parents, and uh, we do have stickers on the stadium seats so that they can sit, still socially distanced. Uh, the pandemic is not over, and we have stickers in groups of four okay. throughout the stadium. We skip a row, and, and they're, they're throughout the stadium, and it's enough to space our parents out safely, but where they can still sit in force. And I know what you're going to say. Not all four are always united as, as a family, right? And we have groups of two, three, and uh, one, two, and three as well. So okay. if they come by themselves, well, I'm not going to be with that part of the family and be by myself. We have that too. So okay. we're going to be able to sit uh, the four family member guests uh, all together or separate if needed. Okay. So we're, we're getting ready for that. We'll Very good. I mean, last year we had two and this Ticket per graduate, and this year we're going to have four per graduate, so we're doubling. Yeah, the, the and I know, I know that a lot of families have more than four people that want to attend. And, uh, you know, I'm sorry, but that's the best we can do to keep it safe. Mm -hmm. I mean, we don't want to be, become a super spreader event where we just pack everybody in because yes, sir. there's big families. Our only accommodation that we have, and I think it's a good one, is we're live streaming it. Yeah, that's true. Uh, we're live streaming the graduation for whoever cannot attend. It'll be on our Twitter page, on our Facebook page, on uh, KRGV is going to air it. Someone's at Via, they're going to air it, and uh, our website. So you'll be able to see it. You like, know, that's, I, that's, that's great that it's going to be live streamed because you may have family members that it's hard to travel right now, you know, mm -hmm. or you may have, have grandma and grandpa that are homebound and they can't get out or they're afraid to get mm -hmm. out. So this live stream is going to be awesome for those individuals. And, 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 um, and I'm so glad you're doing it well, like that because um, even the people that are out of state, out of country, will be able to have access to this and get to participate. And it is very glamorous. Uh, I, mean, I mean, I can hardly wait to tell us how the whole setup is going to be. I mean, last year it was, it was mind-blowing, the setup. And, and um, uh, when I went out on the field, I said, man, what is this? It just blew me away. Yeah. It was amazing. It was. It was and, amazing. Uh, and last year, we were going to have a virtual ceremony. And it wasn't until about three weeks, four weeks before the graduation that they said, we can do it on the field with two parents each or, or whatever. And we were able to put that thing together pretty fast. Yes. But this year, we were able to take our time and look at last year's and just tweak it just enough to where we're, we're anticipating uh, even more successful uh, graduation ceremonies than we had last year. And I do want to add that participation at these is voluntary for the families. Mm -hmm. I know some families are still afraid to, to go out in yes. the public and the kid, they don't want to expose their kid. It is still voluntary, but, but it is there for, for all of them. Uh, we are ranging between 550 to about 630 graduates per high school. I think Edinburgh North has the most. They're mm -hmm. roughly about 630. Okay. Uh, but we do have uh, 
We have a couple items that we've passed out to, to the students. Uh, each student is going to receive the four tickets, and they're going to get three parking permits. And okay. Parking permits look like this. Okay. They're color-coded, uh, parking A, B, C, and D. Okay. They're going to get a parking lot map mm -hmm. where they'll be able to see, oh, okay, it's orange. And this it's, is where uh, I go. It's E, okay. And there's four entrances to the stadium, so they go in through, from their parking lot, the closest entrance. So that yeah. way we don't all bottleneck. Very through good. one entrance, right? Um, they're also going to get some uh, safety guidelines that they'll be able to read as far as what, what to expect, uh, do's and don'ts. I know graduation caps is always uh, a big thing, and uh, they can be decorated mm -hmm. as long as they're in a tasteful manner. Yes, sir. And, uh, nothing vulgar, uh, no mm -hmm. alcohol, drugs, none of those things. Uh, maybe their college where they're going or sure. military or thinking of parents. Uh, but... Yeah, we're, we're sending all this home. We've already provided it to the schools. The schools are packaging it uh, in, in an envelope, and they're going to have the seniors come by and pick them up. So seniors at home and parents be waiting for the, when the, the school calls because you do need to go pick it up. Your tickets are in there. If you don't go get it, that, that's on you. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we, are, we have provided them with everything. Oh, the other thing we're providing is, uh, well, they're tickets, right? Here's an economy this example. It's going to be this one. And a seating map. So we have 660 seats right now, and they'll get that. And every row is going to have 33 seats. So first row is 1 through 33. And yes, they are in alphabetical order. Um, but each student is going to get a number. So when you go get your tickets, it's going to say 004. You're the fourth one. And you'll be able to look at the map, and your parents, oh, okay, so you're sitting on seat four. I got it. So they know where to look on the field to find you. And, and yeah, each and row, we're going to yeah. label the end of, of the chairs as well. We'll say this is 496 to 528. Mm -hmm. And as you're over there with 501, I, okay, I see it. And, and we'll have teachers there to usher them into their seat. But it, it, this should help the, the child be able to find their seat faster and mm -hmm. the parent to get an idea. Okay, I know where you're going to be at, mijo or mija, so I can try to get some pictures from where I'm sitting. Excellent. D Dr. Garza, one of the... One of the one of the procedures last year was a processional. The entire senior class, uh, t graduating class, walked around the stadium on the track. Is that uh, something similar that you're going to be doing? We are still going to do it. Back by popular demand is mm -hmm. the processional, which is where they all walk in a line mm -hmm. to the graduation music pomp and circumstance. Mm -hmm. uh, they're going to still do that. We have shortened the distance. Mm -hmm. uh, last year we had the chairs all the way from end zone to end zone. So they were going about 300 meters all the way around. Uh, we shortened it to about the 50, maybe 45 yard line on the opposite side. So we're not gonna have to do the whole 100 yards on each side. They're, okay. they're gonna do about 60 yards. We're gonna cut it. But they You're are gonna cut gonna, through the chairs? The, no, they're, we're going to cut the 100 yards to 60 yards. Okay. No, no, they're going after the last chair, the mm -hmm. last So you just... Putting the chairs a little we, bit. We, we put them a little closer. Okay. Yeah. Last year, we had them 15 feet apart every row. Oh, okay. Now they're oh, seven okay. and a half feet. Yeah. We brought Got them it. up a little bit. That way, that, that person at the end in the back can, can see the stage. I mean, yeah. They were having to look a real long distance. 100 uh, yards But we plus. do recommend the shoes need to be flat shoes. I know guys usually, usually don't have a problem with this, but the ladies do. And uh, you're going to walk on artificial turf and it gives and so we really say recommend you not wear heels i know heels are look great for these kind of ceremonies but wear wear some flat shoes because it is a long distance we did see some kind of tripping last year on themselves because it, it's difficult it's if difficult. you've never walked on turf uh, it gives a little it bit yes it can snag the heel yeah so uh we, we want everyone to wear flat shoes because they are going to have to walk about 200 meters this year, not 200 meters. meters. Okay. Yeah. Now, now, uh, Dr. Garcia, one of one of the one of, one of the negatives about doing the stadium is that the weather. Uh, do we have contingency plans on on inclement weather? Because it's it's the time of the year, so we need to be prepared for that. Yes. So so last year we were very lucky, and if you guys remember back, uh, there was a hard rainstorm. The night, the day before our first graduation. After that, it didn't rain again. Mm -hmm. But for the first graduation, we, we had to take water out and, and, and sweep and blow the chairs. They were wet. Um, 
But there is a contingency plan. So this year, the Saturday and Sunday, June 5th and 6th at 8 a.m., that's plan one and two. <laughs> now, if we have to go more plans than that, uh, that's plan A and B, right? So if it rains on Thursday and we can't do economies, we're going to bump them to Saturday morning. Saturday morning, at 8, 8, 8 o'clock, yes. or about 8, because at it 8 gets warm. So we, we need to get going. In, at if 8. it rains Friday mm -hmm. and we can't do the second one, we're going to bump them Saturday morning. Mm -hmm. So so it's going to start at 8, so we'll be opening it up at 6.30 in the morning? Yes, sir. Okay. Exactly like the 8 p.m., yes. we do the 8 a.m. All right. Very well. And uh, if we see rain on Saturday afternoon, we got a hard storm coming in Saturday afternoon for Velas. We're going to bump them to 8 a.m. Okay. And we have Sunday 8 a.m. as well. Now, if it rains both days straight, well, then we're going to have to have another show, and we're going to go Monday, <laughs> Tuesday, and Wednesday. Yes, sir. But, but hopefully, you know, the weather allows us to have the ceremonies like it did last year. Yeah. So, so if the forecast calls like for a 100% chance of rain. We know it's going to rain. We'll just kind of... The principals and, we'll, and we'll us, act, we we'll, will put out a parent link We'll react that we're graduating. Yeah. 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 We, we will hold the ceremony, but mm -hmm. we might have to delay it. But, but like I said, last year, it rained one time right before. And it was it was a nasty rain, too. Yeah. But we were still able to hold the floor. For example, let's say uh, uh, we were going to meet us high school Thursday, good for Thursday. For, let's say we were Edinburgh High School uh, for Friday, mm -hmm. for Friday night. And, and the forecast Thursday afternoon or night is called for 100% chance rain Friday. So we'll notify Edinburgh High School. We go on Friday morning at 8 in the morning. We weren't planning on doing those days. It's Saturday and Sunday right now. Mm -hmm. okay. We bump into those two mornings. Oh, the, the, the inclement weather is for Saturday morning and Sunday morning. Yes, right now that's plan A and B. Uh, like I said, after that, we're going to go into Monday, Tuesday night. Mm -hmm. uh, we're hoping we don't have to do that because, you know, people already know their date. Yeah. They, they've made arrangements. They, they, some of them have come in from other towns. And we want, we want to try to stick to it as much as possible. So we'll, we'll be monitoring that. Uh, we'll be talking to Tim Smith and John. <laughs> <laughs> Making sure. Yeah. Very good. Very good. <clears throat> um, there, there's, um, I remember... Um, last time when we were going through the ceremonies, um, there was, um, the, uh, like everything else, you were doing it the, for the very first time and, um, and tweaking it. Um, what are some major changes that, that, that we're gonna see uh, different than from the first time or are they gonna be seamless? We're really kind of behind the scenes changes that no, we've there, done. there's going to be a few there's nothing major changes okay but but a few changes are we did lower uh the feet between the rows from okay. 15 feet to seven and a half feet yes to move the kids up the other one you're going to see is the JROTC will be presenting the colors this year very good uh, last that, year we that, didn't bring them we were trying to minimize correct. minimize people very good. We, so uh, we've reached out they're, they're excited they're ready they're practicing well that's good so we'll get them that's up exciting. they'll be on that's center stage one. yes it mm -hmm. is and also uh, we're allowing up to six choir members depending what they want to bring to sing the Star Spangled Banner that's last another, year very it good. was another recorded only major it was pre-recorded oh. that's right it was pre-recorded yeah. we didn't even have a single one but this time and, we'll have up to and six and I know that there's there's a lot of choir students that, that train their whole life yes. for senior graduation song, and, and then we weren't able to have it because the CDC last year said that singing it projects the most uh, yeah. droplets of, of possible yeah. COVID, so we, we took it out. Okay. But they're back, so we're going to do that, and uh, that's a big change to have so, it live again. So more participation of our seniors involved, so that's really good, or the class. and involved which we weren't able to do last mm -hmm. year because of COVID yeah. and um, so those are the major so good so we'll get more activity from our kids to participate well yeah. that, that is gonna even that kind of add even more to the beauty of the whole thing yes sir the ROTC cadets mm -hmm. doing the the colors the choir program doing the national anthem I mean that's gonna add to something that's very very good uh, I believe oh yeah. yes definitely mm -hmm. Um, one, one more thing that we, we have to address, it's the elephant in the room, and it's uh, Governor Abbott's executive order removing the mask mandate from all gov government entities, including school districts. So he has allowed school districts to go until June the 4th with our mask mandate. Mm -hmm. And after that, 
we will not be allowed to require it anymore. And so we're going to abide by the governor's orders. Mm -hmm. We follow the law here. But so how does that affect our graduations? Well, June 3rd and 4th, we are requiring masks at the Economy Days and Edinburgh High graduations. But June 5th and 6th, at that point, the mask mandate is lifted. Now, Dr. Salinas and myself are still going to wear masks when we're around people, and, and we highly recommend that everyone wear masks. And we encourage everyone to keep wearing masks because the pandemic is not over. Mm -hmm. There's still a few people dying in Hidalgo County every day. So, uh, but we're not going to require it. So, so that is, that's a big change coming up. And it's right in between our graduations because we have four. Yeah. And for the first two, we're still requiring it. For the second two, we highly recommend it. Yeah. And, and I, you know, and, you know and, and just so the public can understand is that, um, that you, you can still wear your mask. It, it, I mean, I mean, it doesn't mean that you cannot wear a mask. Uh, you, we all have the liberty to wear the mask, mandate or no mandate. Um, it's it's just not being mandated anymore. So, um, you know, if you feel comfortable with a mask, wear a mask, and we highly encourage it. But um, it's not going to be mandated anymore. So, um, really, nothing's going to change except that now it's not mandated, but you still have the liberty and freedom to wear your mask if you want to. Correct. The, the other thing that I think you need to address to the parents, especially the friends, flowers and, and banners are big with the parents and, and they, they buy balloons, they, they buy flowers and, and then, I mean, that's a lot of money and then, and then we ask them, you can't bring it into the stadium. Can you talk about that? We've already addressed this with the principals and, and we'll, we'll, we're here for the public. We are, are not allowing balloons or flowers at the stadium. Uh, the balloons tend to be really big and bulky and block the person behind you, one. And the flowers create an atmosphere of after graduation, let me go down to the field and let's all hang around together. And we're, we don't wanna do that. So we are not allowing flowers or balloons. We, we ask you to keep those in the car. Afterwards, give it to them at the car, go home and celebrate wherever you're gonna go. But we don't wanna be responsible for allowing the, this, this congregation of a lot of people mm -hmm. afterwards. I know in the past it was a beautiful thing, but we're in a different time today, so okay. we're not allowing it. What we are allowing are banners, but the banners have to be by a school organization. Uh, a banner that'll say Seniors 2021, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Good luck in college, uh, whatever they want to say. But they have to be a school organization, the, the senior class, uh, the honor society, uh, parent booster, and they need to get it pre-approved by the principal okay. just to make sure. All right. Right. Like the football games where they say, beat the so-and-so, beat this team, beat that yeah. team. And they can put it out there and uh, we will allow that. How but, about the video recording? I know there's a lot of that going on on graduation night. They try to get to the rails and... and okay, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, parents can take pictures and record from their seat, but we're not gonna allow them to go to the rail. We are gonna have police officers there enforcing it uh, because they'll cover the, the first, second, third rows in front of them. Mm -hmm. Because if that's the case, then all the parents will be on the rows and then they'll be all uh, bunched up. But they can take them from, from their chairs. Now I will tell you, uh, we're doing it back uh, by popular demand. We are providing two five by sevens pictures when the child receives the diploma, which they're not gonna get in the hand, but they'll be with a board member and the superintendent and they'll be standing there with their diploma. Uh, we have Trevino's digital photography. Uh, taking a picture of every single graduate and they'll be getting two five by sevens in the mail and then a proof uh, If they want to order more they can order more. So they're gonna get them in the mail anyway They're gonna get them in the mail. Okay, right. every student's gonna get two five by seven So okay, so you don't have to come get that perfect picture because we're getting a perfect picture because uh, Joe Trevino will be staged yeah. right in front with his camera and his team taking a picture of every kid So uh, we're hoping to, to get that out again. We, we already got him blocked in he's excited and uh, the district is providing this thank you dr salinas for providing the funding for this uh you're talking ten dollars a student mm -hmm. and you got over two thousand graduating this is a twenty thousand dollar price tag yeah 20 plus so uh that's back so we we will be providing picture for every student awesome okay um anything else uh, dr garza on the graduations i don't think so um eight o'clock Florida Stadium, doors open at 6.30. It is going to be hot out there. 
So mm. I do uh, recommend uh, don't get there too, too early because you're going to be baking. It's uh, June 3rd through uh, 6th is, is a warm time. But let's have a great time. You know, let's get out there and celebrate our child's accomplishments. Uh, well, definitely the board's looking forward to it. And we really enjoyed it last time. And we look uh, again to enjoy it and celebrate the great accomplishments of all our students at ECISD. It, it's a highlight for, for our board. It's a highlight for our high school staff. It's a highlight for especially the parents. Mm -hmm. They've been at it for some students 12 years, some two students 13 years, Yes. Uh, some more. Uh, so the students have been at it for 13 years, and they've gotten to that moment. Yes, sir. To, to close that chapter. Yes, and sir. And move on to the next, either to work, to military, to college. Mm -hmm. it, it's a big moment. And, it is. And I know it, it's a highlight in, in our community. Before we close it, I do want to remind the parents, no school on Monday. Mm -hmm. It's Memorial Day. It's a state holiday. No school Monday. No asynchronous instruction. No synchronous. No school on Monday. For staff, we have a staff development day, uh, normal work hours. Very good. Uh, thank you for joining, joining us for the superintendent's perspective. Stay healthy and stay safe. Thank you.